Lifeguard with Lifeguarding Legacies. So in this series of videos, I'm answering some of the common questions that I receive in, as an estate planning attorney. And this question is, what does a trust do? So first, a trust will do everything that a will can do. It'll provide guardianship for your children, care of your pets, and distribution of your belongings. But it also does much more. Let me back up just a little bit and describe the trust itself. It's called a revocable living trust. Revocable meaning you can change it during your lifetime. Living meaning that it doesn't die. It will live up to 500 years in Arizona or until it's done everything that we put in that it should do. So a trust, um, because it's living, it doesn't end up in a probate court as long as nothing is left in your name at the time you die, as long as everything is in the trust. Um, the trust itself is a means of bypassing probate court. That, of course, means that everything is kept private because there's not a will to file that's of public record. Um, the biggest advantage to a trust that a will doesn't accomplish is the ability to do distributions over time. Now, why does that matter? You think, I just want my kids to each get a third of everything. Okay, so let's say you have a, a million dollar estate. That would mean each kid has $333 thousand dollars that they're receiving once everything's been taken care of. That's a lot of money. Most adults, even responsible ones generally, are not capable of dealing with large sums of money that they receive all at once. And it tends to put them in a position where they spend too quickly. Uh, it's like lottery winners. We all know the stories. 90% of lottery winners are more broke two years after they bought the ticket than they were, were the day that they bought the ticket. So the ability to do distributions to your family over time is a big advantage of a trust that you don't have in a will. You can make it so your children get 15,000 a year or that they get a third at ages 35, 40, and 50, or any number of other creative arrangements for distributing those things to your kids and your grandkids. The next advantage of a trust is that you can put conditions on those gifts. So this is particularly useful if you have a child who maybe has um, had drinking problems or something like that. We can put conditions in the trust that determine when the trustee would not make those distributions. So if they're off the wagon again, maybe it would pay for their treatment, but it wouldn't actually continue enabling the behavior. Um, we can also put in other conditions, you know, um, things about keeping faith and other kinds of things like that. Those are big legal issues. So those are definitely things you want to talk about with an estate planning attorney, but they are an advantage of a trust. I jokingly tell my clients that if you want to put in a trust that your, your children have to hula hoop 30 minutes a day, as long as a trustee will supervise that 30 minutes of hula hooping, you can put it in there. It's, it's a trust. We can be very creative with these documents as long as it's something reasonable to be reasonable condition. Um, all right, the next one uh, that's kind of an extra bonus of a trust is what I call stupidity insurance. Now, that certainly isn't its real legal name, but it's legal protection for your children from things like divorce and creditors and lawsuits. As long as they're not the ones holding the strings as the trustee um, and someone else is the one that's sending out their distributions, um, they're protected. So if they're sued, they could have their mortgage paid, their car payments paid, their bills paid without anything attaching in a bank account that would be available to the lawsuit. Now that's important. It was your money you raised. It really isn't theirs, even though it's their inheritance. Um, it was your money. And so why should that be attachable in their lawsuit? And so the trust allows that to be protected. It's kind of wonderful. Um, it's important to understand the roles of a trust. There are three roles. There's the grantor, that's the one that sets it up. There's the beneficiary, that's the one that benefits from it, usually your children and grandchildren, maybe other family members. And there's the trustee, and that's the one that manages it. During your lifetime, you're in all three roles, just as if you, it was your regular checking account. But it's interesting because the trust is what will own everything on paper you basically own nothing on paper. Now you'd think that that by itself would protect you, but since it's revocable and living and you're in all three roles, it's still 
recognized to be a mere image of you. Um, and so it doesn't really have asset protection necessarily during your life, not in a regular trust anyway. Um, but it does have the privacy and that it's not going through the courts. Also, it has a decreasing chance of being legally challenged versus a will. Why is that? Well, it's because the will is public record. So any person who thinks they should have inherited could easily pull up that record and say, oh, I should have gotten more than that. Whereas the trust can be kept very private. And so people would have to hire an attorney to, to seek a legal challenge and they'd have to have really standing to do that. Um, so it does decrease the likelihood of a legal challenge. It's not that it can't be challenged, but it, it's not as likely. And as I stated, pretty much it's, it's a very flexible vehicle to accomplish what you want it to accomplish. So what does the will do? Guardianship, care of pets, distribution of belongings, uh, conditions, distribution over time, legal protection, privacy, and flexibility. It's really a great vehicle. It is not needed for every single person, but it is, it is a wonderful legal vehicle to protect your family. So I hope that answered your questions about a, what a trust can do. I'm your estate planning attorney, Heidi Thompson with Lifeguarding Legacies. You can reach me at 602-529-1827.